Shall good morning, students. Good morning, all. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the webinar series of Telangana State Model Schools. Today, in Botany webinar session, we are uh, going to learn sexual reproduction in flowering plants. To take you all into the wonderful world of botany, today we have with us a distinguished speaker, a passionate teacher, Mrs. L. Bharati, uh, uh, is with us. Madam uh, is familiar to you and handled several sessions in botany in these webinars. Good morning and welcome, ma'am. I request you to start your session, please. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, children. Uh, thank you. Uh, I thank my principal, Mohamad Riyazuddin, TSMS Jarasangam. I thank my subject coordinator, Dr. A. Venugopala Reddy, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity to present before you uh, first year botany. I thank my uh, dignitaries behind the screen who is helping me to deliver this lecture. So in, in inter-first year botany, we are exploring the plant kingdom. In this uh, exploration, today we are going to continue with the reproduction in plants, that is unit three, under the chapter seven, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So you are familiar with the reproduction in plants, that is in the 10th class, you have learned about the asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in plants. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction differs from each other. You have an idea about the types of re reproduction in the plants. For example, if you take asexual reproduction, only the involvement of single individual is seen. In the sexual reproduction, two individuals are seen in the involvement. In the asexual reproduction, there is no formation of gametes. But in the sexual reproduction, there are the involvement of the two gametes, that is male gamete and female gamete. Asexual reproduction is present in the plants. It's shown by grafting, cutting, layering, then fission, budding like that. Various types of asexual reproduction is seen. Even in the vegetative propagation, which is also a asexual part of reproduction in the plants, like corn, sucker, colon, uh, stolen like that, it's not colon, it is stolen, sucker, then combs, bulbs, tubers, runners, all these are vegetative propagation seen in the plants. These help in reproduction. It is a type of asexual reproduction. Now in sexual reproduction, it is a union of male gamete and the female gamete. So by the union of male gamete and female gamete, zygote is formed. After the formation of zygote, the development of zygote is known as embryo formation. So embryo will lead into the formation of an individual. What is the importance of sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction will help in the formation of variation among the progenies. So progeny means children. So the children are slightly different from their parents or their forefathers or the grandparents. The, because of this variation only, we can see the evolution in the organism. So in the sexual reproduction is also seen in the flowering plants. Flowering plants are nothing but the angiosperms. In your 10th class, in the classification of plant kingdom, you have come across these flowering plants. That is nothing but the angiosperms. Even in the gymnosperms also, seed formation you have seen but no fruit formation is present. So what is the difference between gymnosperm and angiosperm? In the gymnosperm, fruit formation is not seen, but the seed formation is seen. And in the angiosperm, fruit formation is seen, seed formation is seen. Why are the fruits formed in the angiosperms only? That is Madam, Madam please share your screen. Is it? Run your slides. Ha, okay, ma'am. Okay, I'll do it. So in the flowering plants, angiosperms, flowers are present. That is why the fruits are formed. So we'll see the sexual reproduction in the flowering plants. So sexual reproduction in the flowering plants is divided into three steps generally. It is a pre-fertilization uh, process steps and then double fertilization and the post-fertilization steps. So in the pre-fertilization steps, you will be coming across the gametogenesis and the gamete transfer. That is nothing but the structure and the events present in the pre-fertilization. In the double fertilization, we'll be seeing about the formation of the zygote. 
and in the post fertilization we'll be seeing the formation of embryo that is embryogenesis so the sexual reproduction in the plants is divided into three steps that is pre fertilization structure and events second step is double fertilization third step is a post fertilization structure and events in the today's session we will be dealing with the pre fertilization structure and events and we'll learn about the stamen microsporangium and the pollen grain so in the pre fertilization structures stamen is present so the stamen you are well uh, well known topic that is stamen is nothing but the uh, antrium that is present in the flower so in the flower you know flower is a reproductive organ so what are the reproductive organs it is the flowers so we, before going into the details we we'll learn more about the panchanan maheshwari in Pan, panchanan maheshwari was born in jaipur rajasthan in the year 1904 in your eighth class you have learnt about panchanan maheshwari so panchanan maheshwari is known as father of indian embryology and panchanan maheshwari during his college days he was very much inspired by american missionary teacher called as dr w dajion so this person eminent person has told that he will be happy if a student progresses ahead of him that means he will go further in the subject uh, 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 surpassing him so this made uh, panchanan maheshwari to learn a detail view of the embryology and he has established department of botany that is in the delhi university as a research center in embryology and tissue culture tissue culture now you know what is a tissue culture because of the harita haram program many plants have been successfully developed because of this tissue culture only in a short span of time so that time panchanan maheshwari propagated tissue culture and embryology he has worked on test tube fertilization test tube fertilization means in a test tube he has fertilized male gamete and female gamete of the plant and it has developed into a embryo and later on seed seedlings and this test tube fertilization is nothing but the results of numerous plants that is present now in the uh, nurseries so intra ovarian pollination has also been done by panchanan maheshwari intra ovarian pollination means he has done the pollination directly on the ovary without the involvement of stigma or the style so it is called as intra ovarian pollination so test tube fertilization and intra ovarian pollination has lead at intra ovarian fertilization has lead a uh, distinguished position for panchanan maheshwari not only in india but also in the world he has been honored with the royal society of london fellowship of royal society of london it is called as frs and he has also honored with indian national science academy and many other ac academics he has been ex excelled that is why he is known as father of indian embryology the photo of him is like this this person is panchanan maheshwari he was born in jaipur rajasthan and he is popular not only in india but also in world because of his work in the embryology field now what is embryology embryology is a branch of science which deals with the development and formation of gametes and it also involves the process of fertilization and development of embryo so in embryology the gamete formation the gamete transfer the zygote formation the development of embryo all these are studied under one group of biology that is embryology and floriculture is a branch of botany that deals with the study of flower yielding plants that is nothing but angiosperms exclusively flowers are used for ornamental purposes or for decoration purposes like that so in various aesthetic sense also flowers are used 
so floriculture has flourished because of the presence of this reproductive structure in the plants so biology is nothing but it is the essence or story of life on the earth so without biology we cannot find any living organism on the earth so whatever life is present on the earth it is because of the living organism that is present on the earth so these living organism will propagate only by reproduction the reproduction can be asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction in the plants so the without reproduction the species cannot survive for long and sexual reproduction will be helping in variation of the species that is why sexual reproduction creates variation it will help in survival advantage of the species because the climate is changing now without adjusting the climate we cannot survive that is why sexual reproduction is helping us the flowers are present in the plants which is nothing but the sexual organs in the plants it is a morphological and embryological marvels and it is a site for sexual reproduction in plants generally when we see a flower we'll just pluck it and keep it with ourselves is it not so these flowers are nothing but the sexual organs in the plants you know the structure of flowers is it not so flowers contain four whorls four whorls means the outermost whorl is uh, sepals that is it is called collectively called as calyx next to sepals is the petals it is collectively called as corolla and next inner to petals it is the antrium antrium is called as stamens and the stamen group of stamens is called as antrium and inner to stamens is the ovary style stigma that is carpel carpel is called also called as gynecium or the pistil so flowers contain these four whorls and r cameridius has studied this flower and gave the sexual system of classification for the first time so this person has helped in developing taxonom taxonomy and panchanan maheshwari also told to include embryology in the taxonomy classification so now we are using various fields to classify the plants so that time during the time 1694 camerarius was the first person to include flowers in the system of classification it is known as sexual system of classification now we'll see the pre fertilization structure and the events so what what do you mean by pre fertilization pre fertilization means before the process of fertilization what is fertilization fertilization is nothing but syngamy syngamy means formation of zygote syngamy is nothing but union of male gamete and female gamete before the fusion whatever structures and even take place in the flower that is called as pre fertilization so before the formation of flower there will be some changes in the plant so at the tip of the stem or at the tip of the branch or in the axil of the leaf there will be several hormonal and structural changes so hormones like florigen hormone the florigen hormone will help in the formation of flowers and structural changes means in the leaves also there will be secretion of this florigen hormone and when this florigen hormone reaches its site then the flowers are developed so several hormonal and structural changes will be taking place in the plant and these changes will help in the formation of the floral organs so generally the flowers are thought to be compressed shoots or it can also be called as compressed leaves it is a part of modified leaf or modified shoot so whatever changes that takes place in the shoot system will help in the formation of flowers so these flowers are exclusively present in angiosperms only whatever flowering plants you see around us is nothing but a angiospermic plant and the flowers group of flowers is called as inflorescence the stalk of the flower is called as pedicel the stalk which you catch in your hand while take plucking the flower is pedicel and if you pluck a group of flowers that stalk is called as peduncle okay children so stalk of flower is called as pedicel stalk of inflorescence is called as peduncle so when the flower is large enough 
to be visible single flowers may be present but when the flowers are very very small small in size not conspicuous they are present in groups and it is called as inflorescence earlier renuka madam has told you about the racemose inflorescence and cymose inflorescence so that is nothing but inflorescence structure only which will help in the reproduction of the plants it is exclusively sexual reproduction so in the flowers we have come across the non essential parts that is calyx and corolla calyx is a group of sepals it is generally green in color corolla is a group of petals it is generally brightly colored to attract the insects for pollination and this calyx and corolla are not necessary for the flowers even if they are not there the sexual reproduction will occur because of the essential parts that is antrium and gynecium so these antrium and gynecium are fertile parts and this calyx and corolla are sterile parts in the antrium also sterile stamens will be present they are called as staminodes so what is antrium antrium is a male reproductive organ of the plant and it is also called as stamens gynecium is a female reproductive organ it is also called as pistil or the carpel so in today's class we will learn about the stamens or the antrium so stamen microsporangium and the pollen grain stamen has two parts that is anther and the filament anther is a fertile part of the stamen filament is a stalk of the anther so filament is a long slender slender stalk on this filament at the terminal region anther is present this anther is bilobed that means it has two lobes the proximal end of the stamen is attached to thalamus thalamus is also called as torus or the receptacle what is thalamus the condensed part of the tip of the pedicel or the peduncle is called as thalamus the condensed part of the tip of the pedicel is called as thalamus on this thalamus only the floral parts will be arising all the four folds of the flower will be arising on this thalamus only the proximal end of the stamen is attached to the thalamus that means it rests on the thalamus from the thalamus this filament will come out and at the tip of the filament anther will be present already you know this structure or the stamen can be attached to the petal if it is attached to the petal it is called as epipetalous stamen you can observe the brinjal flower in the brinjal flower the stamens is attached to the petal so that is called as epipetalous stamen generally the stamen will be attached to the thalamus only and the stamens can vary in number and the length also there may be two stamens in a flower to many stamens in a flower the length can be small or they can be elongated protruding out of the flower also so in a typical anther if you see it is bilobed it has two lobes with each lobe having two theca that is why it is called as dithecus and bilobe will have four microsporangia it is called as tetrasporangia tetra means four sporangia it is a structure given to the microsporangia so bilobe dithecus tetrasporangiate anther is seen generally in all the flowers in hibiscus if you see only one thecus will be present with single lobe that is it is called as monothecus monothecus anther is seen in hibiscus with only single lobe so generally all the flowers will be bilobe dithecus and tetrasporangiate that is a longitudinal group that is arising in lengthwise separating the lobes that is the bilobe is separated by this longitudinal group in the central part between the lobes there is a connective this connective will have the vasculature that is vascular strands will be passing through the anther for food and water and minerals that is done by the connective present in between these lobes so if you see this structure this is a structure of a stamen individual antrium is called as a stamen so this is a stalk slender stalk like filament and at the tip of the filament there are bilobed anthers 
so these bilobed anther is having a longitudinal groove this is a longitudinal groove in the longitudinal groove you can see connective is present which is having the vasculature and this is one lobe and this is another lobe this is having theca this is also one theca this is two theca that is why it is called as dithecus so in hibiscus only one thecus will be present it is called as monothecus and if you see the cross section of the anther you can find four sporangia these are microsporangia it is also called as pollen sac so microsporangia how many you can see 1 2 3 4 4 are present so tetrasporangial structure in one single lobe there are two sporangia in four uh, pollen sacs are present in the bilobed anther so it is bilobed this is one lobe this is another lobe it is also called as theca one theca two theca so bilobed dithecus tetrasporangiate anther is seen in the flowering plants generally if you take the ts of anther you can see that the anther is tetragonal tetragonal means four sided you can see here it is four sided 1 2 3 4 four sides are present that is why it is called as tetragonal tetrasporangiate just now i had told you there are four microsporangia and there are two lobes that is why anther is tetragonal tetrasporangiate and bilobed with dithecus anther each microsporangia will form one pollen sac so how many pollen sacs will be present in bilobed anther there will be four pollen sac what is the importance of pollen sac in the pollen sac pollen grains are present the pollen grains will be numerous in number so we will study now the structure of microsporangia microsporangia is pertaining to anther only because we'll come across megasporangia also so microsporangia is a male reproductive part so microsporangia will be appearing circle generally it will be in circular in outline so it has four wall layers epidermis endothecium middle layers and tapetum epidermis endothecium middle layer and tapetum so epidermis endothecium and middle layer what is their function they protect the microsporangia and tapetum will help in the nourishment of the microsporangial cells so we will study what are they so first three layers that is epidermis endothecium and the middle layer will help in the protection and dehiscence of the anther dehiscence means splitting of the anther why should the anther split because to liberate the pollen grains we need the pollen grains for pollination no so the anther will split because of these three layers only the epidermis is single cell it is thick cell linear in arrangement only one layer of epidermis is formed it, they are tubular cells or flattened cells and in few cells it is thin walled the epidermis is generally thick walled only but few cells are thin walled also those thin walled epidermal cells are called as stomium stomium means it is the area where dehiscence of the anther will occur that means it is called as line of dehiscence so in bilobed anther how many line of dehiscence will be there there will be two lines of dehiscence they help in the dehiscence of the pollen sacs so when the stomium ruptures that time the pollen grains from the pollen sacs are liberated we'll study that also so next layer is the endothecium it is present below the epidermis layer so in this radial cells are present in epidermis thick walled cells are present and they are flattened cells in endothecium radial cells are present these will be having the fibrous thickenings now what is the importance of fibrous thickenings at maturity these fibrous thickenings will help the cells to lose water and contract when they are losing water and contracting they help in the dehiscence of the pollen sac that means it is having hygroscopic nature so because of its hygroscopic nature the stomium will rupture because it is present below the endothecium only so 
middle layer is present two to three layers of flattened crushed parenchymatous cells are present these middle layer generally have the reserve food material which will help the development in the earlier stages of the microspore formation so middle layer generally they are parenchymatous only they are loosely arranged present below the endothelial cells generally these middle layers will have the food reserves which will help in the development of the microspore so generally epidermis endothelium and the middle layer will help in the protection or the uh, dehiscence of the anther now we'll see the tapetum it is very important tapetum will be single layer they have radially elongated cells that is pyramidal cells radially elongated means pyramidal cells it is the innermost layer it will be present surrounding the microsporangia so each cell in the tapetum that is each tapetal cell will have a dense cytoplasm with more than one nuclei so at least two nuclei will be present in the tapetal cell with the presence of two nuclei you can observe the tapetal cell under the microscope so this tapetal cell will be having two nuclei what is the importance of two nuclei means because it has to carry out function of nourishing the pollen grains so pollen grain should be nourished because it should also get some food that food is uh, sub, 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 uh, supplied by the tapetal layer so tapetal layer will be having more than one nuclei that is by mitosis more than one nuclei will be formed in the tapetal cell and that will take up the nourishment of the pollen grains what is the main function of the tapetal cells the main function of the tapetal cells it nourishes the pollen grains where are these pollen grains present these pollen grains are present in the microsporangia inside the tapetal layer microsporangia is present that is nothing but the pollen sac so like a bag and bag will contain many various things we keep lot of things in the bags is gunny bags so like that in the pollen sac pollen grains are present so the pollen grain should get some nourishment so that nourishment will be supplied by these tapetal cells it also produces ubish body in the tapetal cells if you observe there are small small granules those granules are nothing but the ubish bodies what is the purpose of ubish bodies the ubish bodies will supply sporopollenin will come across the sporopollenin again while studying about the microspore mother cell so sporopollenin is secreted by the tapetal cells only it is called as pollen kit material and the tapetal cell will also secrete enzyme which enzyme callase what is the function of callase it will dissolve the callose layer present around the microspore it will come across this callase also again the sporopollenin also again so pollen grain is nourished by tapetal cell sporopollenin is produced by tapetal cell the enzyme like callase is secreted by tapetal cell this is the three main function of the tapetum so inside the tapetum there is a mass of homogeneous tissue the tissue is called as porogenous tissue what is this porogenous tissue it is nothing but the microsporangium that is filled up with this porogenous tissue when the anther is very young that time it has a group of compactly arranged homogeneous cells these homogeneous cells are having less space between them they are compactly arranged and these cells further form the microspore mother cell okay from the sporogenous tissue only microspore mother cell is formed so sporogenous tissue will be having compactly arranged homogeneous cells so this is a diploid structure so this microsporogenous tissue will be called as microsporangium later on as the anther is maturing this microsporogenous tissue will form the microspore mother cell this is the structure of microsporangium so if you see this is a tetragonal bilobe tetrasporangiate anther structure ts okay so now you can see in the center there is a connective this connective is nothing but vasculature of the anther 
and this is the longitudinal group this is the longitudinal group you can see here this is a longitudinal group which will run like a lengthwise inside the anther and these two are the line of dehiscence in this area only line of dehiscence has occurred so with the line of dehiscence rupturing of the pollen sacs has taken and it is liberating these pollen grains so before the formation of pollen grains there is a lengthy process that will help in the formation of pollen so if you see the structure of anther wall outer layer is called as epidermis it is single layer flat cells inner to it is a single layer endothecium this is the endothecium and inner to it is a middle layer so here two middle layers are present so endo epidermis endothecium middle layers these help in the protection of the interior parts of the anther that is nothing but the sporogenous tissue the so microsporangium so inside the middle layer there is a tapetal cell that is tapetum this is the tapetum so in the tapetum you can see nuclei are present their prominent dense cytoplasm is present and then it will help in the formation of the nourishing of the sporogenous tissue so each sporogenous tissue in this can form a microspore mother cell so microspore mother cell will help in the formation of the microspores we'll study that now so for microsporogenesis what do you mean by microsporogenesis it is the formation of haploid microspore tetrads from the cells of sporogenous tissue by the meiosis is called as microsporogenesis tissue so in the my sporogenous tissue where it is present sporogenous tissue where it is present inside the tapetal layer inside the tapetal layer the sporogenous tissue is present so the tapetum will be nourishing this sporogenous tissue so this sporogenous tissue is surrounded by anther wall it is called as uh, epidermis endothecium and middle layer the whole structure of the sporogenous tissue is called as microsporangia so microsporangia will enclose which tissue it is a homogeneous compact layer in parenchymatous tissue called as sporogenous tissue what is the function of this microsporogenous tissue each cell of this microsporogenous tissue will act like pollen mother cell or the microspore mother cell so pollen mother cell or the microspore mother cell will be helpful in production of the pollen grains it is also called as pmc or mmc so pollen mother cell will be giving rise to tetrad microspores and which will dissociate further to form the pollen grains so from pollen mother cell pollen grains are formed or the microspores are formed first the pollen pollen mother cell will be having a thick wall around itself that wall is made up of cellulose callos it is not cellulose it is callos so that callos wall has to be separated or disintegrated so the disintegration of the callos wall is done by the callase enzyme it is done by the callase enzyme which secretes callase enzyme it is done by the tapetal cell so the callase enzyme will digest the callos layer present around the microspore mother cell and meanwhile the microspore mother cell will undergo reduction division to form four microspores that four microspore is called as microspore tetrad so as the microspores are maturing they will separate from each other and now the microspores are called as pollen grains so this pollen grain is different from the microspores microspores will be having a callos thickening around it and as the callos thickening is getting disintegrated these microspores will separate from each other forming pollen grains now this pollen grain should be protected because it is coming out of anther so that pollen grain is surrounded by pollen wall we'll study that now so pollen grains are represented by the male gametophyte 
what is male gametophyte that means the male gametes is carried by pollen grains the pollen grains will be carrying what male gametes that is why it is called as male gametophyte so pollen grains will have the male gametes pollen grains are the, not the male gametes inside the pollen grain male gametes are found how many male gametes are found two male gametes are found that will study now so pollen grains are generally circular in outline so it is 25 to 50 micrometers in diameter and it has two layered pollen wall it is exine and intine so exine means outer wall intine is innermost layer of the pollen grain so this exine is protects the pollen grain and the intine also protects the pollen grain but the exine is made up of sporopollenin earlier we came across sporopollenin is it not so what is sporopollenin sporopollenin is produced by the ubish bodies present in the tapetal cells this sporopollenin what is the importance it is very much important because it is the most resistant organic material known till now so sporopollenin is the most resistant organic material that means it is not digested by the strong acids or the alkalis or any enzyme even at high temperature also you cannot degrade this sporopollenin this sporopollenin is helping the pollen grain to survive in the harsh climate so it is preserved as microfossil okay so the pollen uh, is also identified with the ornamentation that is present on the exine the exine is surrounded by the sporopollenin the sporopollenin is very hard it does not get degraded so and also ornamentation on the outer wall will help in identification of the pollen grain so how will the pollen tube emerge from the pollen grain that is at certain areas on the exine wall the sporopollenin is absent okay that sporopollenin where it is absent it is called as germ pore or the germ aperture in this region the sporopollenin is absent in this region only the pollen tube will come out so the pollen tube generally single pollen tube will come out that is called as monosiphonous but sometimes three pollen tubes or more than that can also come out from the germ pore so through this pore where the sporopollenin is absent the pollen tube will come out so inner layer is intine intine is the innermost layer of the pollen grain so pollen wall is made up of generally exine and intine exine is made up of sporopollenin intine is made up of cellulose and pectin so intine is made up of cellulose and pectin so intine wall is regular and continuous around the cell membrane of the pollen grain but the exine is not continuous it has gaps in between that gap is called as germ pore generally in monocot one germ pore will be present or in dicots if you see three germ pores may be present the cytoplasm of the pollen grain is surrounded by the cell membrane or the plasma membrane around this cell membrane only intine is present and around the intine exine is present now we'll see what is present in the cytoplasm of the pollen grain so mature pollen grain will contain two cells these two cells are called as vegetative cell and the generative cell vegetative cell is bigger than the generative cell inside the vegetative cell only generative cell will be present what is vegetative cell it is also called as tube cell because it is having the capacity to produce pollen tube so this vegetative cell is having irregular nucleus and abundant cytoplasm filled with food reserves this food will help in the gen uh, Uh, nourishment of the generative cell the generative cell is nothing but a small spindle shaped cell floating in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell so this generative cell will later on form the male gametes vegetative cell will be bigger generative cell will be small spindle shaped vegetative cell will be having large irregular nuclei and the generative will have a small nucleus which will divide mitotically to produce male gametes 
So these are the uh, pollen grains. This is the outer layer. If you see, there are spicules on it. These are nothing but the ornamentation on the egg sign. Okay. Depending upon these designs and patterns only, we can find out the pollen grain is from which species of the plant. And these three uh, gaps which you see here, one, two, three, these are the germ pores. So germ pores are present where the exine wall is absent. And inside to it is the intine, you can see it is continuous layer. And then in the cytoplasm, you can see this is a vegetative cell with a large irregular nuclei. And this is a spindle shaped generative cell with a small nuclei. This small nuclei of the generative cell will divide mitotically to produce two male gametes. So this generative cell will be floating in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell or the tube cell. So this is a pollen grain. You can see three germ pores are present. This is the exine wall which is ornamented. And because of this ornamentation design patterns, on the exine wall, you can identify the pollen species. So this is the pollen tube. It is having at the tip vegetative cell. This will help in the increase in the length of the pollen tube because it has to uh, deliver the male gamete into the gynecium. So these are the male gametes. Here it is written as sperm cells. So these sperm cells will be floating towards the pollen tube tip. So now if you wanted to observe the pollen grain, you can observe also under the microscope. If you take the anthers of a hibiscus flower, crush it, you will have some yellowish powder on your fingers. Take that powder, keep it on the slide, put some water and dust this yellowish powder on, on the water, place a cover slip, observe it under the microscope. Pollen grains will be observed beautifully. You can observe it. They are very beautiful to look at. Now, in the angiosperms, if you see two cell stages present, that is the pollen grain is shed at two cell stage. Just now we have seen the pollen grain will have two cells. What are they? Vegetative cell and the generative cell. So at the two cell stage, the pollen grain is shed, generally in the 60% of the flowering plants. And what about remaining 40%? It is shed at the three cell stage. How will we get three cell when the generative cell divides into male gametes, two male gametes will get three cell stage. That is one generative cell, uh, 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 two generative cell, that is two male gametes and one uh, vegetative cell. Okay. With the three cell stages obtained. So generally at two cell stage only the pollen grains are shed and these pollen grains generally will have some allergies. Generally, person are allergic to the pollen. These pollen allergies will cause respiratory disorders. That is asthma, bronchitis like that, hay fever like that, uh, disease, uh, uh, pollen allergies and the bronchial affliction, afflictions is seen. Example for this is parthenium or the carrot grass, even chenopodium and amaranthus also causes pollen and allergies. Generally, this parthenium is visible all around us. It is an invasive weed which has come along with wheat crop to our country. Before in India, this parthenium plant was not there. But along with the wheat, wheat grains, this parthenium seeds have come into our country and it has infected the soil. That is, this parthenium is spreading very vigorously around us. And if we inhale the pollen of this parthenium plant, we will get allergies. So it may affect the lungs of our body causing asthma or bronchitis. And pollen are also rich in nutrients. Because of the nutrients, they are taken as food supplement. This is given in the form of tablets and syrups. So it, it helps in the increase in performance of the race horses and athletes. So to increase the stamina, the pollen tablets and the pollen syrups are taken up by the athletes and also they are fed to the race horses. Those, uh, those horses which are in the race uh, 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 sports that in them also they are fed with these pollen tablets and syrups. Generally pollen grains are allergy only so while taking these pollen tablets and syrups, we should see whether we are allergic to it or not, and then we should take it. 
otherwise it will be harmful mm. for our health the pollen grains should land on the stigma of the gynoecium and it will bring about the fertilization so pollen grains how will it land upon the uh, stigma with the help of pollinating agents that also we will learn so general pollinating agent is a honey bee you know honey bee is uh, moving around for in search of nectar from one flower to another flower so while going like that the pollen grains is uh shift uh, transfer from one flower to another flower and when the pollen grain falls on the stigma it will develop the pollen tube so the pollen tube will pass through the uh, gynoecium part of the uh, uh, flower and then fertilize with the ovule of the ovary we'll learn about that also so pollen grains will land on the stigma by various pollinating agents and then fertilization will occur now what is the viability of the pollen so viability means potential of the pollen to remain alive that means to germinate and fertilize fertilize the egg that is called as viability pollen viability will depend upon the temperature and the humidity for example if you take the cereals like rice jowar bajra wheat in that the pollen grain should reach the stigma within 30 minutes if it does not reach the stigma within 30 minutes the pollen will die it will not germinate so it is shed off and in rosaceae like rose plants in fruits in leguminaceae that is legume plants like beans uh, pulses if you take solanaceae like brinjal potato the viability of the pollen is for months they can survive for months together so it may not be only for months it may for be year years also so the viability of the pollen depends upon the temperature and the humidity depending upon the temperature and humidity the pollen will germinate on the stigma to bring about fertilization so some pollen grains which are less viability are stored in pollen banks so pollen banks are similar to seed banks only for example for crop breeding programs we will be using seed banks that is seeds are stored in that area like that pollen which has less viability or which die early they are stored in the pollen banks in the liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade so at such a low temperature they are stored so that they may not lose their viability in the liquid nitrogen so this is called as cryo preservation so cryo preservation is famous for uh, storing the pollen banks seed banks stems also also the various vegetative parts of the plant they are storing like that so that they can be utilized further for further experimental process and bringing about hybrid varieties so now it's a time for mind work first question is draw the diagram of microsporangia what is microsporangia it is a circular outline it is present inside the anther it is protected by the anther walls inside the microsporangia what are present it is having the homogeneous uh, cells called as sporogenous tissue what is the function of sporogenous tissue sporogenous tissue will have microspore mother cell also called as pollen mother cell what is the function of pollen mother cell it will help in the formation of microspore tetrad what is microspore tetrad it nothing but it forms a pollen grains in future so what is the difference between uh, microspore mother cell microspore and the pollen grains microspore mother cell is diploid tissue it will undergo reduction division or the meiosis to form microspore tetrad microspore tetrad is held together by a callous thickening after the de disintegration of the callous thickening it will separate from each other to form pollen grain pollen grain will now develop a pollen wall made up of exine and intine and then pollen grain will have liberated through the line of dehiscence so write briefly about the wall layers means around the microsporangium there are three wall layers from the outer side epidermis then endothelium then middle layers okay they help in protection which are the three cells found in the pollen grain when it is shed at the three celled stage 
So generally, 60% of the angiosperms will shed at the two cell stage with vegetative cell and generative cell. But three cell stage, only 40% of the flowering plants will shed. And what are present? What cells are present in them? One vegetative cell and two male gametes. It is called as three cell stage. What is the function of two male gametes produced by each pollen grain in angiosperm? So generally, one male gamete will be fusing with the egg. The other male gamete will be fusing with the nuclei present in the central cell. We'll learn about that during the fertilization process. So two male gametes will fuse with the egg and the polar nuclei present in the female gamete. Name the parts of the angiosperm flower in which development of the male gametophyte take place. So what is male gametophyte? It is nothing but the pollen grain. So the po pollen grain will be the male gametophyte because it is carrying the male gametes. So what are the parts of the flower which will have this male gametophyte means? It is andresium or the stamen. In the stamen, it is the anther. Explain the role of tapetum in the formation of pollen grain wall. So what is the function of tapetum? Generally, first function is nourishes the pollen grain. Second function is the tapetum cell will have ubish bodies which will help in production of pollen kit material called as sporopollenin. Sporopollenin is the most resistant organic material known till now which is not degraded by the enzymes nor attacked by the strong acids and alkali. It is preserved, the, it preserves the pollen grain as a microfossil. And third role is it helps in the secretion of enzyme called as callase. Because of the secretion of callase only, the microspore tetrad will uh, separate from each other and form pollen grain after the formation of pollen wall. So children, you have, I think you have understood stamens, microsporangia and the pollen grain formation. So with this, I conclude my session. Thank you. And ma'am, thank you ma'am for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much for everybody for listening to this lecture. Thank you ma'am. Thank you Mrs. Bharati madam for the wonderful presentation with all the images and very clearly you have explained about the um, sexual reproduction in flowering plants and uh, uh, we expect some more interesting sessions such sessions from you madam and students listen carefully and uh, and uh, write down the notes copy down the notes try to understand uh, go through it several times thank you thank you all thank you ma'am